Hi everyone, I am Donna Reed and this is Donna Reed Talks Voice. And I am so happy to invite uh, to work with me today, Peter Marinero, dear, dear friend and longtime student. Hi, Peter. Hi, Donna, so glad to be here. So happy to have you here. Peter is an amazing dancer, singer, actor, director, all of the above, amazing all around performer, artist, and a fabulous person. And um, we are going to work today together with uh, Donnie. Donnie, do you want to introduce yourself to my audience here? Yes, I will. Hello, everyone. I'm Donnie Wright um, from Los Angeles. Um, I'm friends with Peter. We, we met uh, on a Disney contract, and uh, he's been a great person and a support to me. So I'm happy to be here to lend my voice and, and take this class. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So let's get going. Um, hit play and we'll see what goes on. Sounds good. He's not here, he's not here, love, I know you know. Do you feel he's still real, love, it isn't so? Why is it you still believe? Nice. Very nice. So, Donnie, great job. So this is from um, Next to Normal, right? Yes. Yeah. So I like to start off just knowing, um, I like to know why people chose the songs that they chose, you know, especially for an audition. Um, so, yeah. So why don't you, wh why why this song for you? Uh, this this is a body work that isn't traditionally done in, uh, in, a, in a multicultural capacity. Uh, and Dan, I, I had an opportunity to audition for Dan, and I really love the role, and the music is so beautiful. Uh, so yeah, I, I would love to to portray him one day. So he's he's on my radar. Great. Oh, that's that's awesome. So it's a character that you connect with. That's really important because what you know, me and Donna are finding, and we've we've known this, but what we we see a difference when someone is really connected to their material, especially in an audition setting when we get to pick what we're gonna sing. We know when someone has just learned a song because they're trying to fit into a category versus I love singing this. This shows a piece of me. I'm this is this is what I'm going to do. So I love to hear that. A uh, couple thoughts with this. Um, this is such a conversational song. And of course, all songs are conversational. But I, this character is being pretty direct with someone and it, dealing with a very precious and sensitive subject, right? Um, so what I really love about this music is there is built in time for you to assess how this person is receiving the information you're telling them. Yes. Right? Because especially when it gets into the three, four, why is it you still believe, right? It's easy to get into like the two bar phrases because the music is written this way. So I have a thought here and then I have a thought here, right? It's easy because that's physically your body kind of wants to do that as well. But as the actor, we have to think of it as a complete phrase. That doesn't mean you can't breathe when you need to breathe, right? Or if there's a rest in the music, like we can take a breath when, need, when you need to, but we have to make sure that we're connecting the full thoughts. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And then what I will say with that is we talk about uh, something, is there breathe? Is there something you say about breathing in here? No, grieve, just kidding. I, but, and I, I feel like Donna will get into this, but I, I want to see you make more of a conscious intention about your breathing here, yeah. that everything that we're doing is a conscious thought, right? Um, so for you, I think it's a matter of breaking up this song, which is a lovely, like little audition piece, right? To me, I feel like this is one of those uh, songs you have in your back pocket when they say, hey, do you have something else that's just different that kind of just shows you and it's very simple. It can really show off your acting. And also there's like a, a bit of a legato line and also shows like the mixy side of things, which by the way, I've never really heard you do this kind of vocal stuff. So, and that's really, you can, you can do that stuff. Um, so I think this is a great piece to have in your back pocket for sure, for an audition. Um, I'm gonna give it over to Donna for a second. Yeah. Uh, it sounded lovely, wonderful. What was really, what I really liked about it is the easefulness with which you're singing it. You know, there's no um, obvious strain or anything like you're reaching for the notes. Uh, my question to you, and this is de uh, specifically for my listeners, when you sing those top notes, you know, that you're really just floating beautifully. Um, do you consider those notes a falsetto, a kind of a chesty mix, a chest it's a, it's voice? A How do you sense them? It's a it's a chesty mix. Uh, I, yeah, it's, it's not a full on, uh, you know, full on uh, belt or anything like that. It's a, it's a mix for me, yeah. It's a mix because what happens is when I get a lot of my students to sing those notes the way you sang them beautifully, a kind of a chesty mix, but kind of really leaning on the falsetto side, they all look at me and they say, oh, but that's too false, I can't sing that. And you're allowing yourself to sing that, which I think is wonderful because all of my guys say, oh my God, I'm using a falsetto, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> and especially, I'll tell you what I love, especially when you did the first uh, G on the Do You Dream, and then you do the second one all these years, the second time, it's a little bit fuller the second time. So the first one's got a little bit more of the falsetto, the second one's a little bit fuller. So you're able to do those, those little blending things that I'm not even going to fuss with because you're doing them beautifully. Now, the way you're doing them beautifully and naturally is going along with exactly the emotional intention that you have for this piece. So do you dream is a different sound quality register balance than the um, uh, he's been dead all these years. Well, that's not the same sound. You're, you're expressing something differently and you're just doing that part beautifully. Now I'll talk about what Peter was mentioning about the breathing. Now, yes. one thing about the breathing is the breath has to have the emotional component of what it is you're doing for the song, right? What, what, how would your character breathe, you know, right from the beginning, he's not here, he's not here, love, I know you know. And you know, most of the breaths for, for this are not big, long, you know, expansive breaths. They're kind of small, easeful breaths. You know, it's not a, and it's not a, it's not that. It, it's kind of a, you know, not even worrying about uh, the the technical aspect of, oh, how am I breathing? Not that, just the, what is the emotion? How would you breathe before those two phrases I said before? Do you, uh, do you dream or do you grieve? How would you breathe before you say that? And then how would you breathe? He's been dead all these years. So I'd like you to try it again. We're gonna start with yeah. that aspect of it. The sounds yeah. are great. Don't even worry about that. Think about how would my character breathe to express that phrase that I'm, that I'm expressing? So you wanna try it again from the top with that thought in mind. Vocally, you don't even have to worry about what you're doing. You're great. So just think of that breathing part. How does the breathing get me into that? And Donnie, be right before you start, I'm gonna give you something to think about as well, along with the breath. Um, right at the beginning there, 
This is the first time you're saying he's not here, right? This character has come to a moment. I believe in the show, this is when sh his wife brings out a birthday cake for her dead son, right? And it's about having to like have this really hard conversation because he's asking, wait a minute, do you really believe that he's still here? Or, or I think I think you know that he's not, but you're refusing to acknowledge this, right? So that first he's not here, it's it's almost a frustration, right? Because we have, listen, grief is so complex, right? Um, it, it's sad, it brings about anger, right? Emptiness, acting out, all of these things. So something that could be some, and you, not that I'm saying you're doing this, but a trap with this kind of song is it's dee da da dee da. So naturally we wanna like relax into it, which you should, however, He's also grieving as well. That's something to remember in this piece. So I want, the, with that, all that said, I want you to give the information to who you're talking to specifically. And then I want you to check in how this person is receiving. So you put it out there. He's not here. He's not here. Um, love, I know, you know, right? Check in. Is she receiving what I'm saying? No, I got to continue. So now I'm asking more questions. So that allows you to naturally build upon what you're saying. So um, yeah, so just think about that on who you're talking to and how they're receiving the information. And then also Donna's suggestion with the breath. Okay, sounds Great. good. Yeah, I think the, the whole breathing thing certainly worked better. How did you feel about that? Yeah, I feel the same way. I, I felt a lot more relaxed and, and allowed the breathing to, you know, kind of be a choice and, and to help express what those words are. Yeah, that's exactly what I heard. That's exactly what I heard. Between each one, it was just organic. It was very, very good. Yeah, and... It's interesting you said I, you felt more relaxed into doing it because with that relaxation that you felt, I also got that this was more active, right? It, that you were really engaging this person. So this is an interesting thing where as performers, of course, we want to feel as relaxed as possible so we can, you know, actually sing. Um, but it's a matter of allowing the breath to naturally do what it does. Um, yeah. And also being intentional about it. It's like a weird, um, it's tra not tra right? It's like that weird fine line of being relaxed but active. Could um, I just interject for a second about the word relaxed? Because um, I don't like the word because most people equate relaxed with collapse. And what Peter is saying, you didn't collapse at all, but you were quote unquote relaxed. So you had the right energy that you needed, but you didn't have the excess tension that was unneeded. So uh, I like the word of being just appropriately engaged. Sorry, okay. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, I really like the quibble about that word because people think relax and then they just kind of do this. 
And okay. you know, you can't collapse and you didn't certainly didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and one thing I also, this is just kind of like a technical thing, especially for auditions in general, right? When you go in and you're either cueing your accompanist to, to begin, you say, yeah, I'll nod you in, or in a virtual setting, you are literally reaching over and pressing play. Donnie, I'm just going to bring this up because you, it, a lot of actors tend to like want to hide, like, oh, I don't want you to know that I'm pressing play. Pretend like I'm not, you're, yeah. you're very much in your space. There, you introduce yourself to whoever you're talking to in a virtual setting and you press play and there was a natural transition that you're taking in that moment, right? Especially auditions in a room when you, do, I, 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 I really like when actors include the accompanist, right? Whether you're gonna tell them I'm gonna nod you in, you hear the first bar or so and it kind of, then you transition to exactly who you're talking to, right? There's no preparation that we're seeing of, looking down and breathing and no, you're, you're taking in the room, taking in the space and you did that naturally. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. That's real, because for us watching, we just go, okay, he's, it's, it's, we don't, we don't get nervous for you. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. That's a really, just a really nice start to your audition here. Something I want to play with. So I mentioned earlier that, you know, grief is um, very complex. And people within even one conversation about grief, it can ebb and flow into different things. So something I want to try now is I want you to make those conscious decisions. Because like I said, this character is also grieving, but he also, um, you, can, you can maybe tell me more about this character, um, but it, he has like the weight of also taking care of his wife, who's really struggling more than he is. But he also is grieving. So it's this like layered, it's been happening, right? Because in the song it says he's been dead all these years. So it's been, it's been a lot, this has been a long time, right? So I want to go again and I want you, before we start, you take like a couple seconds to make a decision on at the beginning. Is it that he's gotten to a point that he's angry and he needs her to move on? Like you, you, you are doing this to yourself. I need you to stop, right? Whether it's, you know, psychologically the right way to go about things, he's, he's at a point too. He's not well in himself, yeah. right? So I want you to make a choice. Have I? Has he reached his limit? Which is why he's singing this song, right? She just brought out a birthday cake for their son who has passed many years ago. And was this kind of kind of set him off at the beginning? And then he's catching himself to really ask the questions, wait, do you feel he's still real? Yeah. Right? So maybe it's he's hit the limit at the beginning, but then he's gonna yeah. inquire more about it to try and have this honest conversation. So take just a couple seconds to think about that. And so that you can track where he's going with this. So I like you, I like you sitting for this. Yes, I'm sitting. Should I be, should I be standing? No, go. I like you sitting okay. because what that naturally does to, and this is something that I recommend to a lot of people that I work with, especially when you're in the beginning stages of working on a piece. When you sit, there's a natural grounding that happens and you can really focus. Um, you know, the reality is that if you go into a room, you're not going to, there won't always be a chair. I mean, usually they do have a chair available to actors, but you know, this is something to think about that you want to be able to be standing because that immediately it's a different, different yes. feeling, right? Um, and if you haven't experienced it standing, sometimes you'll get in the room and with nerves, we'll start the body will start taking over and we start making all these unconscious like physical movements. But for now, I like you sitting. I feel like there's a really nice uh, grounding to this. And if we were going to, you're going to use this in a virtual audition, this is perfect. This is, I, I think this would be perfect. But um, I want to try that again, like I mentioned, and I want you to make those decisions about how complex this character is feeling. And for you, I think you need to put someone extremely personal in front of you who you're speaking to. Yes. Yeah? Yeah? Can do. Yes. Awesome. Now, one little, one little interjection. 
while you're doing this, because what happens when we have more layers to think about when we're singing, we forget about the breathing. And again, right. not that I'm going to, you know, harp on the breathing so much, but when we start thinking and, you know, getting more, uh, I don't want to say intellectual in a negative way, but start thinking about what we're doing, we sometimes then hold our breath. So yes. whatever your choices are, the breath is part of those choices. Gotcha. You know what, Donnie? I, I want to try something. Let's just try something different for a um, real quick. Let's try not using the accompaniment for right now. And okay. I actually want you to look, uh, I want you to focus on me right now. Yeah, on the screen. Yes. And okay. I want you to sing this to me. Don't, don't worry about uh, the intro, right? Just sing it and have this conversation with me. And okay. I want you, I want you to have uh, the intention to make me snap out of it. Okay. I've just said something that has completely, it just has set you off a little bit. This is the first time you've ever saying to me, he's not here. And I need you to tell me, and I need you to make me hear it. Yeah. So let's start from there. No music. Okay. Sing it to me. Focus on me. Yeah. Um, and let's see where it goes. And I may interject, but you can continue. Okay. Okay. Yes. You, do you need the pitch or you got it? Because I can. There it is. Let's take it. Okay. He's not here. He's not here. Love. I know you know. Do you... Keep going. Continue, yeah. Do you feel he's still real? Love, it isn't so. Why is it you still believe? Do you dream or do you breathe? You got to let him go. He's been dead all these years. Oh, my love, he's not here. Yeah, so. What I think is so interesting about this is, gosh, auditions are hard. We are meant to be put into a room and look at the wall and communicate. It's a hard thing. It's definitely a skill. And it's so amazing when you put a person in front of someone, how like it changes, right? We see that all the time. What I liked about that, to me, there was more of an urgency to give this information to the person yeah and again the accompaniment and the music is written in a way that is almost counterintuitive to that so just an idea to yeah. think about that we don't want to fall to what the accompaniment is doing because then as we talked about earlier it can be that relaxation moment that doesn't that can you know, either shut down the voice if you get too and collapse your voice acting wise, it's not really active. Um, so that's what I really liked about it. What I will say just at the very beginning, and this now for me, I think it's pushing more towards I'm directing a little bit in this sense versus coaching. But the first he's not here, he's not here, love, I know, you know, I think you're trying to sing it too much. Does that make you sense what, what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, you know what, let me interject a little technical thing because yes, what I noticed something that happened this time uh, that didn't happen before is some of the lower notes had a little scratchy sound to them, a little <clears throat> Now, what, ha what that means is you're pushing a little bit too hard. In other words, maybe you're singing a little bit too much, singing a little bit too hard. Do you know what I mean? So when we, we put a little bit too much pressure on our voices, 
it can get that little scratchy quality. Now, not that you want to back off again and collapse, but uh, that goes absolutely along with what Peter's saying. You know, don't don't think about the singing so much. It has to be a little more, you know, even especially when you go down in the lower notes. Top notes are all fine and wonderful, but that those little eh, 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 when they come in, do you know, it's it's maybe the the singing intention is too much. If that makes sense. Yes. Okay. Right. You know, like what I think about in this moment, if this is the first time he's really just coming out and saying this, he's not here. It's finally like what well, you've been holding this in and you're saying, he's not here. He's not yeah, here. Right? It's just boom. Right. It's not, he's yeah. not here. It's, it's, you're just being, um, I think being a little more direct. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, Let's so can we just try um, those first two um, that those first two phrases then he's not here's not here love I know you know do you feel just that first little page there let's just try that with those in with the with those thoughts okay. Ready. <clears throat> he's not here he's not here love. I know you know. Do you feel he's still real, love? It isn't so. Uh, it, it felt it, it felt it felt a lot, a lot. It felt yeah. It felt like a conversation. Um, and yes, uh, yes, it, it did feel like it lended a little more than it did before. Am I breaking up? Can everyone hear me? Okay. I think we got, yeah, we heard what you, your, uh, your reaction to that. And it was good. And I know from personal experience too, that again, my direction to you, be more direct. So then in our brain, we go, oh, I got to say this. But then vocally, if it's too much, right? Then we, what Donna was uh, talking about just before, it, it kind of like fights it a little bit. So it's really about finding that happy medium um, that can work for you. And of course it's different for anybody, for everybody. Um, but to me that, and that also gives you somewhere to go because you still have a whole nother page of music to get through. So we have a whole long conversation here. So give yourself a place to go is a really um, good thought with this piece. Absolutely, okay. Yeah. yeah, I thought that I thought that was excellent. There was, it was there. It was um, purposeful, and there was no pushing on your voice. You know, you didn't need to. And then the second half is actually easy easier for you because you go higher, you go into the falsetto, whatever. Actually, in some cases, with some singers, the lower part's a little bit more difficult because the lower part is so easy, quote unquote. Although the high obviously is easy for you, but still, because the lower part is low. We can tend to really, you know, try to do that with it. And uh, just that little backing off did not get rid of the frustration. When you backed off, we didn't feel that you're less frustrated, you're less whatever. We felt that, we heard that, but you don't put that in your voice. You know, it came out anyway. That was great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can we try the whole thing once more? And now, Donnie, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. I'm going to ask you to stand. Okay. I think that doesn't mess you up too much with your setup there, but uh, I'll... Yes. it sure. does. Well, well, I can try it, but I probably should adjust it because I'm going to, yeah, give me two seconds. Yeah, to that's fine. I just like throwing cur curveballs, especially right at the end, because why not? <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Can you see me? Okay. Great. Now, now all I'm going to say is it will feel different because now you're standing, but our approach vocally and um, intentionally is the same. We approach it the same way. Just know that it will feel different and that's okay because we're now you're in a different dimension, basically. Does that makes sense? It does. Um, so would you like it with music or without? Let's do it with music. Okay. All right.
She's not here. She's not here. Love, I know you know. Do you feel she's still real? Love, it isn't so. Why is it you still believe? Do you dream or do you grieve? You got to let him go. He's been dead all these years, oh, my love, he's not here. Well, that made a difference, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it and again, it was different, but I didn't feel like you were completely adjusting what you, we had just worked on, right? It all kind of informed us to this moment. I just want to bring a moment to your attention that worked through, it was your last, oh, my, no, my love, that last no, you naturally did a no, my love. There was a, it was a very natural thing that you did there. And it just, I, when you said, I literally was like, Oh, wow. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm right there. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention because that's something that came out of this after we have you had you stand and do this. Um, but really good job. And I, yeah, I love that. I love that. It seemed how even more. How did you feel um, comparing the two sitting and standing? Um, well, standing, I felt I actually, it sounds weird, but I feel a lot more grounded standing than I did sit, sitting. Um, and I was able to sort of really connect with the one. Because I don't think this is a conversation that person would have sitting anyway. Uh, so it could have been some pacing or something before, before I got into the conversation. So it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm directly, you know, addressing the situation and it feels a lot more grounded for me. It seemed to me, uh, just, you know, watching and hearing, that you seemed slightly more comfortable standing up. Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Great. Any other final thoughts, Peter? Peter? Well, my dog loved that version. He's very excited um, <laughs> with you standing. So I, I think we all like the standing. I think that works for you. But I think what's really great is that we started seating and it allowed us to build on it. And I'm glad now you know that you've tried different things. Oh, I, I felt more in charge of this when I was standing. So now we know that that works for you, right? Okay. A lot of this, you know, especially when we're working on songs specifically for auditions, we have to test it out. We have to test out the different things, whether it's the vocal choice, the intention behind the acting choice, I think, you know, and we have technology now to we can watch back what we've done so we can make those decisions because we tried a couple different things. And ultimately, when you go into that audition, you get to decide what you bring in, what choice you're going to make. But, you know, we present the options. Wonderful. Thank you so, so much for doing this. Peter, thank you. Donnie, thank you so much. It was lovely, lovely working with you and, and hearing your beautiful voice and uh, great, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate uh, the coaching and uh, this has been a fun opportunity. I hope that we get to do some more sessions in the future. So thank you so much. Me too. Yeah. Thanks for watching Donna Reed Talks Voice. If you have any questions for me about this episode or if you'd like to join me on a future episode, please visit DonnaReedTV.com and click contact.